by five. Okay, so this has more pitch than Brian Ethers. Yeah, but it's a smaller diameter. But it's smaller diameter. This is the first time you're flying this prop? Yeah. How many you got over there? I saw you got the stick with all the props. But they're all... Uh, they're well, I'm, they're Rich, that one. prop that's on a Spitfire now, the Doran prop, mm -hmm. that's a good one. That's one, and I got a gauge for it, so... If you want to try that later in the day, we'll just pull it off there. It runs nice. Among the projects today, Brian brought some crack filler. Rich has got his whole stalk of props. And now that Rich is becoming a prop maven, a prop expert, we should say. How many did you pitch so far? Three. Three? Oh, you're an expert. You're ready to go out on Stuka Stunt and give lessons. <laughs> That's probably three more than most of those guys that are out there have done. Unbelievable. Oh, the Ferrari flags right under the Tavia. What are you doing here? Having a sling lay an egg or what? I'm trying to adjust the pipe is dying on top. It goes up and it slows down when I get up on top. And um, How long's the pipe now? Well, let's find out. See how it is. I got mine 18 inches. See who's 18. 18, right on the money. That's perfect. Well, it's no good. No good. It's dying. Getting a square eight, it starts to die. Well, but it's towing a boat. It has nothing to do with the thing. I mean, if you if you if the plane is too heavy, no matter what you do. I lightened it up considerably. It's flying real good. Only thing is dying. It wasn't doing that before. What prop is on there now? 13.5. At full 13? Yeah. Well. Cut it down a little bit. Cut it to 12 and a half. It's a. Uh, it is twelve and a half. Well, cut it to twelve and a quarter. Get a little. The prop load is way too high on that. It needs to let it. Rawr. And how big is the Venturi? Two ten. That's the one you did. We drilled. Two, is it two ten? Yeah, the one you drilled. Make out. it two fifteen. That you take the air filter off. That'll make it have more power. Fly it once with the air filter. See if it gets better. If it does, I'll open it up five thousandths. I got the Rima right here. We can do it right here at the field. The, having the air filter off is about the equivalent of five thousandths more of I mean, Don't fly it forever. Just fly one flight to see. You know, when you need more mileage, you can put some pantyhose under that filter. Or when. All right. So what's happening is you go into the square right now. Uh, yeah, but it's loading it. It's towing a boat. It's towing that. That should be in a sixty-ounce plane, sixty-five-ounce plane. Well, it ain't much more than that now with everything I've got gutted. How much is it? That's you right. want me to bring the scale tomorrow? Yeah. I'll bring the money. scale. I just well, about 75, 77. I'll bring the scale tomorrow, okay? All right. Let's see. And you, you don't have any weight on the nose, do you? Yes. Oh, you got weight in the nose, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, it takes a lot of power out of the motor just to... Now, I just wanted to mention, and it's it's nice to know this, of course, it's only recently that Rich has started actually paying attention to prop pitch. Now, the reason is, and let's just back the story up just a little bit. Up to this point, Rich was using my prop. He used it at the Nats, at Brodex. But it's one of the props, and the reason I loaned it to him, it worked good on this plane, and it just wasn't right for the Testarossa. Well. What's happened since then is, because where our field is, you pick up stones on the tips, among other things. This prop has too much load. See, the motor's not breaking. Now, what's happening is he's figured out, and, it, and first off, Brian has gotten pretty good at figuring out, because Brian's a car mechanic, when the motor's overloaded. Now, see, he's got no motor run here. I'll let you listen to it, listen. No motor run at all with that much load on it. As you load the motor more and more and more, what happens is it, it wants the two cycle, but it can't. It's under too much of a load. Now, he could take some of the pitch out, will reduce the load, 
And since this is already a smaller diameter, we don't want to go less. He's got no motor run here. That's the key thing. Without a motor run, everything dies on top. See at the top how that's dying right there. It's just stopping. No drive, no penetration. Now, of course, the things he could do, you could open up the Venturi, add some compression, run the motor faster. But then you're on a one-way street to Palookaville here. He had this really dialed in nice with the other prop. So what he's trying to do is match the original prop that, that was made for the Testarossa, and I have a gauge for that. So I'm gonna see at the end of this flight if he's got, it could be he's got too much pitch. Five and a half is too much pitch. For this motor, that would mean you're running about 8,000. You really want to run a 77. I like to run it between 85 and 95. 9,000 on a Testarossa is really ideal. Then it gets rough and bumpy, 91, 92. When you run it slower than that, yeah, you can get away with it and it's a little quieter, but it really, those big props, the full 14 inch props, especially the one I was using at the Nats, they really load the motor. Now, a couple of other things while Rich is in this learning curve, because this is the kind of information, a guy builds his first pipe plane, he gets the wrong prop on a plane, he'll be very frustrated. And I know which Rich Walbridge has a plane that's set up, that's ready to go, so he's got a feel for it. Now, among other people, he's gonna be where Rich is right now at some point in time, trying to match prop pitch, trying to get the pipe length right, and if you're in doubt, always start at 18 inches. If you're in doubt with prop pitch, I guess, you know, you need to just experiment, just like Rich is doing. But see, at no point in this run does he have a motor run. That's the problem. That load is just too excessive for that, for this setup. Now, we could, if we wanted to run this prop, because it's loading the motor and he's running at a slower RPM, we could make the pipe a little bit longer. But this is what we don't want to do. We could take out one of the head gaskets. We could open up the Venturi, among other things. But we're trying to keep this simple. And the nice thing about using Rich Oliver's system now, in my case, I have my I have a, a green air filter and underneath, on the Spitfire, several layers of the pantyhose. And I adjust the mileage just by taking out or adding one of the layers of pantyhose. And we learned that in Houston, that's worked well for us. I don't know how many layers of pantyhose Rich has on here, but as a test, he could take them all off. Just to see, now here, he's got a little bit of a motor run up there at the end of the flight. Well, we'll see how he feels at the end of the flight. And it's been a couple days now, I mean, sad news is we wound up losing a lot of fish last week. We lost one of the little ones, three of the big ones. And we've, we've really been like our family. We, we, amazing how we get attached to these animals. And Karen's been kind of depressed about it. And we decided we were not gonna buy any more replacement fish until the spring. And just because maybe we haven't cured whatever killed the first three, we don't know yet. Anyway, let's see how he feels about this. So, but this is what's nice about the little group that we have here, the four or five people that are here almost all the time, is we're all learning at, at some rate and we're all learning from each other. And we're all, look at that air. He's got good air here. What'd you think, Rich? No motor run. Rich, what you have, Rich? Five and a half pitch. Got too much. He's got too much pitch and it's loading the motor. What happened is, you, at no point in the pattern did you have any two cycle. It just, no, no. Bleh. That one doesn't give me any two cycle either, which it. is five pitch. But it loads the motor less. This is like it's towing a boat. So take, quit it to five when you go home. I got one that's five. Okay, that's what you need. But it, didn't, it, it did not give me any uh, two cycle run either. The only one that gives me a two cycle run is my prop. Is the Brian Ether prop. He needs more. He needs more. Boy, I see the price of that prop going up as the day goes on. I may get $300 for that prop at the end of the day. What do you think, John? I don't trust any of these guys. <laughs> he got too much pitch on. He got the most. No, nah, he's, got, he's got like a Tiger 60 pitch. He's almost like mine. Now, the scenario is, it's taken me 
probably the better part of this season to get this one door and prop working. See, it would always work great in calm air. And it really lets this plane rotate a lot better than with the two blade prop. But getting the pitch right, it was the pitch and it took, well, I'm still working on it, but what we want to do before the day is over is put this prop on this plane and see what kind of, if we're close. We got, we don't have enough air yet. See, the problem is all of the props are going to work in this air. The problem is I want it to be really bumpy before I get my flights with this because I know this is deadly and it's good air. But what would happen with Doran's prop at one point in time, when it would get where most people put the plane away, it would get marginal. You could still fly the pattern, but it, it didn't drive like the two blade. Well, now that it's pitched and the pitch is affecting the load on the motor, now that it's right, we were going through a couple of days ago, we were going through stuff where I would have put the plane away. And it was really, it was driving like a truck and almost no wind up at all. It was just balanced nice. So anyway, now the next trick is, can we do it again for Rich? It's easy to do it, it's easy to do it once. It's like anything you can do once. You hit one home run or one strike in bowling. What we want to do is be able to do it over and over and over again. And as the day unfolds, we'll see if we can do that. And either this afternoon or Monday, Middlesex is Sunday, today's Saturday, we're gonna stop and have lunch with Dub Jet. He's up here from Texas. He's got some motors for Rich. But before I can do the rest of my testing, I need a lot more air than this. This, this air here, this prop would always fly in this air. What I need is when that flag is sticking straight out. <laughs> you know what happened? I heard this. Some guys go to heaven, they get 72 virgins. You're getting 72 Bali props to pitch. <laughs> what's, what's Brian up to now? You're wasting all this good air. Look at that flag. We could be ferrari in this. I could be flying my Ferrari here. Come on. Now here's a man that knows how to set the needle. What do you say? Did you thank him? Yeah, you leaned it out a little more. Yeah, when you walk to the handle, he's going to set your needle every flight. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's right on that breaking point. Yeah. You yeah. just set it and that forget forget that using the tack stuff. Get it on the break point well, and that's it. Now you could see what it runs. He does it backwards. He tacks it instead of getting a good motor running and tacking it. I want to go ahead and open it. It's like buying shoes without bringing your feet to the store. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, we got rocket scientists within rocket scientists here. <laughs> you almost got drilled by those geese. Did you see those geese? A whole herd of geese went over at about 20. 20. We almost had. Hey, next week is my birthday. We could be having a goose stew for Wendy's birthday. John wants to grab one. You gonna cook one? Yeah, cook that sucker. <laughs> cook that sucker. He wants to cook one for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Rich, I told you I'm watching this show, the Jeff Corbin Animal Experience, and he's up in Denali Park, a thousand miles from civilization, and he says, here's the rarest of rare things. He sees a red fox. I said, we got one. We got one right over there. <laughs> this jerk. Comes out here and watches the The rarest of rare things, a red fox. We got a fox in the most highly populated area in the world. That fox is probably getting sick of paying the high taxes in Bergen County. I don't know. The fox is all over. Anyway, we've got a very good prop development day going on with Rich and Brian. Brian sets the needle, Rich pitches the prop. And after 20 flights, they get a good run. So as the day grinds out, and it's turned out to be a real nice day, we're not going to have the air I wanted. I wanted some nasty air to just confirm that that Doran's prop is where I want it to be before I pitch up another one. And I'm trying to get Doran to send me a couple more. But anyway, it, it works good on Rich's plane. It works good on my plane. And it, it just can't be any better than that. This is This is... The only thing we need is, a, is some really nasty air here, and if we do, I'll shoot some video from the tripod, but if it stays nice all day, it's hard to believe we're screwed because it isn't getting nasty. The air is so good, you're almost not getting valid prop testing stuff. 
Ooh, what happened to our bicycle? Yeah, I was gonna yeah, where's the bicycle girls? Bicycle, the ones with the, bicycle. The ones with the ab. Put some Ronson. So you got six guys to set a needle valve. Unbelievable. The gang that couldn't set the needle valve. You guys got more guys than a NASCAR pit crew to set a needle valve. It's unbelievable. Just don't get it out of the range of where you got a motor run. He's got a motor run. Hooray. I'm so impressed. The man knows about prop load. He's graduated from the prop load school of Fort Knox here. You know, and the bigger and heavier a plane is, the more you depend on a motor run to get it through. He could be a little bit leaner. Yeah, it's breaking a little bit harder on inside than outside. You just go in just a tad on a needle here, my boy. Now with the day over, we're gonna do some maintenance on the field. We got some crack filler, because where the testarossa's been taken off, we've been chewing up the wheel pants. There's some bumps there. Brian brought some crack filler. Where'd you get that, in Home Depot? The crack filler. And one of the things we were happy about is the day's ended. We had uh, probably the better part of a gallon of fuel through it now, and there's not one drop of oil leaking anywhere, so we did have just the problem that we solved on the last video. We're back to heaven where we almost, well, break from the tailwheel back, we gotta wipe it off. But that's a nice, and it's nice in terms of it doesn't get the plane all oily, but not only that, it doesn't do any, any damage or anywhere like, and again, I use Matt Newman's bad experience of having some of the oil get inside by the fillets and stuff. You can lose a good model that way. You know, we're basically doing this so both Rich and I are having, except for the Spitfire, our ships have wheel pants and there's still some bumps we haven't filled in yet. And we do all the maintenance on this field, among other things, <laughs> weed whacking and whatever. You got all the dirt out of the cracks? Don't bother with Rich's side. I don't care if he goes flipping over and breaks his wheel pants. It's only me that matters. That crack is a, is a, is a freaking cap. Hey, Rich. You got the one? That's costing me wheel pant repairs. You're complaining over nothing. Yeah, wheel pant repairs, baby. Take the lid off. Be a man. Oh, yeah, look at this guy. Well, I'll tell you, let him, you let these illegal immigrants into the country and look at what they're doing. Look at this. Unbelievable. How long does it take for that to set up? See if he's got a green card, Brian. I don't want my Testarossa wheel pants all chewed up. Man. That's pro stunt. I'm telling you, I am so impressed. What time are you guys getting down to Middlesex tomorrow, early or late? You can't fly till 10 o'clock. You can't fly till 10 You want to come here in the morning, get a couple flights? I thought I was. Those guys are going to Dunkin' Donuts. You'll come and I'll meet you here. Yeah, okay. I'll meet you here. Get a couple flights and we'll go down. What time do you want to get here? 
Seven o'clock. Seven, okay. We'll meet at seven and we'll leave here at a... We just stopped down on the way home, go past the RC field. We saw some, some pretty cool stuff happen. It looks like they got a good crew going here today. Some big stuff out there. Oh, here they are. And if you've never seen this before, and there, we, this turned into a pretty good day. We are exactly on the other side of this river. There's a river in between us. Our field is on the other side. So we get to see these guys every once in a while. That's a kit. This is a kit. What kind of motor's in there? Look at a prop, Rich. Yeah, no. Bison 4.2 cube. 70cc's. That's a nice. It's a spicy meatball. <laughs> You could put a nice, you know, I could put a nice puppy in that canopy. <laughs> we could catch that. We got a fox by our field comes out. We got a family here. You got a family in them here? Okay, so they must be the same they're, ones. They're prolific here. Here's another yeah, one down got, here. When he came out. Yeah, we had one that sat in the, yeah. the runway watching us for about yeah. 15 minutes. He sat there like a dog watching yeah. us. The minute we walked up, he didn't turn around. Yeah, he, you know, one of the guys was flying there. He came out, he sat Check this out, he's got the battery and a cooler. That's pretty neat. Well, it's early Sunday morning. We're going to head out to the field for a couple of uh, flights with Rich and John and Brian. And then head down to Middlesex for uh, Carlos Serra's contest which is always a good one. And they've done some work on a field down there. We're looking forward to seeing how the field came out. They did a little modification to the flying field down there, and it's the first time we've been there since then. Now we get down to the field, and I mean, it is it's a shame we have to go to a contest today. It is stun heaven here. And it looks like it's gonna stay this way all day. Look at the flag. Even a Ferrari flag isn't moving around. Well, we're gonna get, we're gonna stay right up to about a, an hour before the contest and then head down to Carlos's. But if we get down, in fact, the air is dead right now. It was, it was breezy before, it's, it's gone dead. What a day, we've hit a couple of good ones right in a row here. And we really have this door and prop. I am, this is the most satisfied I've ever been with the three blade setup. It's going through the dead air, it's going through the, the real buffety stuff yesterday. And you can dial up the phone and buy one. Unlike some of these great products we have where the minute you go to buy them, you find out nobody's got them. And sometimes getting stuff dialed in in dead air is good because you really need, you really do need some drive and you, you better have driving your sneakers too, backing up. Look at this, Middlesex, and we're back. Now they have done a major, major, we got a 12 foot fence, 10 foot fence. They've repaved the donut. This is the first time we've been here. Actually, this looks pretty good. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Look at this fence. Man, this is great. I feel like I'm in a ghetto here. <laughs> I feel like there's prisoners should be here. Hey, what's up, Sleep? How you been, my friend? I'm a farmer. Hey, you made it. You didn't call me because you know I'm a farmer. <laughs> I did all my weed and who needs you? <laughs> hey, what's up, kid? Nah, he, uh, oh Jesus! You Glad know, you guys made it. Like they, to, uh, what's that? That's uh. We come to support you guys, boy. Good man. We're guy, coming up to Hampton that, next yeah, week. You are. I know you are. The huh? guy from uh, Texas. What's his name? Rishaller? Uh, no. no. Is one of the kids that was sent to arrest us? Okay, this is Arresti. You know, he flew good at the oh, Nats. Yeah. yeah, he was on the Mahi. That was able to get one of the kits that was sent to him. Okay. So. And, and how much? How many hours is it to, from the kit to where you can fly it? Realistically, if you go full paint job, the whole thing. No, no, like what you got right now. Here? AMA numbers, a couple of stripes and stars. About 12 hours. Okay, so a weekend. A week. If you work through the weekend. One, one good weekend. And if you right. put a real finish on it, you're gonna take forever. Yeah, you're gonna take forever. Yeah. Months. But you put a real finish, you're not at 55 hours. Yeah, exactly. This is exactly. As is. Yeah. Well, any plane, if you just leave it in white, it's better. Fine, sore. And how do you? Yeah. Hey, crew. Yeah. And how do you like it so far? 
Uh, very, very good. Good? I, I, I don't like the way the motor's mounted. It's hard to get consistent runs. You get a lot of vibration in the front end. Yeah, when I launched, I launched a couple of these and you, your fillings fall out. Right. <laughs> like that. Can I ask yeah. you once a real quickly about your, what? your, your DVD with the Chicky? Yeah. Chicks? Yeah. Okay, is that a very short? It's an hour. No, I have to talk to go up my wife because we put it in. Maybe you got an old DVD player. Old DVD players. She put it in a computer. Oh, it won't play in a computer, maybe. I don't know. Be honest, I'll give you another copy. Oh, well, no, no problem. It's, you get your money back, no problem. <laughs> You're going to fly, please yeah. fly now because there's a line yeah, of people yeah, out there. Yeah. yeah, let's go, Krug. Come on, you're holding up the Spitfire team here. Yeah. Holding up Buddy Weeder. Hey, how you been? How's your daughter? Good. I need to know what I need to do. Yeah, oh, wait for the lunch break. Yeah, we'll, uh, later on, but I, I got Yeah. Here. Some of the guys from Massachusetts came down. Dave Eiskin's down here. You guys coming up to Hampton next week? Yeah, and then Lee the week after. That. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to Maine on the week in between, so. When is next weekend? Next yeah, next weekend, Dave's contest, yep. <laughs> so what's the deal with this? Retro discovery, long stroke. Long High compression, PM. yeah. Relatively high, it's, it's, it's only like 145. It's not, it's not like overly high compressed. No night. You had Jim pull this apart and look at the head, or, or no, you pulled no, no, it apart? I, I've taken it apart, this one. Okay. And uh, then we had our compression gauge on it. So what happens if you put this in a regular plane? Great. Runs good in like a pattern master Runs kind of? better in a, in a set of mounts. Right. Oh. That thing is mounted, it's, you know, yeah. it's fixing it. Well, I could make a 50 ounce plane if you leave out the motor mounts right, right. and crutch well, it and everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen show. these. I like that motor Sergi Belko had. Right. I, I wish Jack of Bone had one and he sold it. He did? Yeah, because well, I would have. Yeah, I would have liked to try it. Yeah. yeah. But this is Sergi's making a 75 now. Oh, There's it? a Sergi Belko 75 okay. coming. He's got the props for it too? Oh, yeah. The prop comes with, and the spinner comes with the motor. Has he sent it to you yet? Not yet. It's coming. As soon as I have one, we'll test it for him. Again, these screws here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... All of the screws are like this. One this is why these guys didn't win the war. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you got. Oh, nice. Hey, that's nice. Good looking guy. Yeah, he is good. Looks looking. a lot like me, my evil twin brother from Rodax. <laughs> <laughs> he looks a lot like you, yeah. but you're a lot better looking. Here. Thank you. Here, remember this one? Oh, geez. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That's great. Hourglass. That, you ought to award that to Jackabone when he's there. Yeah, that where ought, is you ought to put that in stunt news or Aren't something. Aren't going to be here? He's going to be, yeah. He had to go do some stuff with John. Oh, nice. Nice. You're the man, Mr. Camera. John. Well, that you better give that to. You oh, should make yeah. an enlargement for John. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, get I him an eight by these... ten. You're two bucks. Yeah, they're nothing. A buck and a half. No, yeah, you, it's cheaper than pizza. I sent one of these to uh, to Tom. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Where is these around? Well, well, they went. They went to get John's plane. They're all lining up for fly now. So let me get. I got to put the Ferrari flag up. Yeah, that's right. Boy, talk about stun heaven. It is about as Ferrari nice as it can be here. Um, and I still, well, it doesn't get to be much more stun heaven -y than that. Wow. Anyway, we got a nice little crowd here. That looks like it's going to be a great little meet. Danny's here. A lot of the guys from Philly, a lot of the guys from Massachusetts came down. Palco's got the electric, among other things. And the pits are filling up with planes. Now the only downside of this whole thing is it's really difficult to pit because we're, we're enclosed, let me just do this pan, we're enclosed by a 10 or a 12 foot fence, the whole field. From edge to edge, it's enclosed with this fence, so you can imagine. But. Boy, the air is just super duper duper, unbelievable. Look at that air, just a little breeze. Rick Campbell's practicing. 
And we'll see Rick next week up in uh, in Hampton. We'll be going up to his neck of the woods. You're up next, Dave? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I just gotta get a real The field in uh, in Lee Mass, have you been there? Is it grass or tar? Uh, it's grass. Grass? Okay. Are you gonna go? Yeah, we're going, sure. We're going to Maine after Dave's contest, and we're gonna wind up in Lee on Friday night at the at the cookout. Out in See, this is one of the only downside here. The pits get really crowded. But certainly nothing we can't live with for today. <laughs> the one thing good too, and because we're only flying off one circle, you never have to worry like when Mike Palco's flying the electric, there'll be nobody with a Dynajet on a circle behind you. You got an extra, sell, sell him the jack of tell him, tell him $200 a pair. Now the little thing's a little detense when that goes into the wing. Yeah. Let me see what, you, you see that, that set screw in there? Oh, okay. A little set screw. So that little pocket, he's just holding that in on a piece of plywood. Right. Not even a full rib. No, nah, half a rib. Did you ever really bounce this? I try never to. Yeah, no, I mean. But they land themselves. All you gotta do is yeah. back up, back up, yeah. back up. Just leave, leave the plane alone and land. Let me see something. Hold the wing. Just hold the wing. I want to see how much flex is in. There's very little. It yeah, gives wow. A little bit of more. And you got some out this way, yeah. yeah. But that's a nice way to mount it. Well, I like when that. When you go to, when you see it on a ground run, it'll go. When you see Jackabone, don't put this back in until you see him. I want to try to sell him a pair of these for 200 bucks. He's coming down. <laughs> Here he comes. He just, he's just, uh, he's dying. Les is designing up this shock absorbing gear for him and everything. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. They got a, they got a $500 set of landing gear being made. <laughs> you could buy one of these planes. You can't tape the hinges, huh? No, nah, back pivot, though. So they close it, they hinge line anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, they protrude a little bit down. Did you ever try taping it, or it doesn't matter? No, nah, it turns too good. I wouldn't tape them. Well, when it's light like that, it's not yeah, a problem. It's 55 ounces. <laughs> yeah, like but then if you put 10 ounces, of, you put a dip it finish on, a Mike finish on it. Goodbye. So one stripe there and on numbers, That's right. That's Let it. Mike paint one and goodbye. Oh yeah. Get out the gram scale. Finish his six. Automotive years. paint. <laughs> Plenty of it. Yeah, and dip it for that extra little weight at the tail. <laughs> uh, you're not allowed in. No Nazis need apply. No bigots need apply. <laughs> What's, where's the entrance? Just German jump over. On Don't jump on. Thing. Squeeze it good, Bob. <laughs> what, you've got to jump over on the Banjox plane or something. Holy mackerel, look at this. Is this the way to get in? This is how you have to get in. Look at these landing gear. Come on. You're not going to jump, are you? Dennis! Rich. You tape everything here? I tape you. Don't break my leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Let's be honest. You know, you could have walked through the gate. Ah, oh, don't tell him the gate. Don't tell him we have a gate. You didn't tell him all your secrets, did you? The gate is right down there. Not yet. Palco, put the lock on the gate. You send him over there and give him all the kids. Old men prison. <laughs> Senior citizen prison. Richard, here's your last chance. You can buy him right now. Look, Rich. Rich, you could buy. He's got an extra. He's got an extra pair. You can buy. Who is buy. this? Where? Jose, right here. Look. Stuka gear. You just bent him straight. You don't have to jump just the gate right down in the front and walk around. Oh, okay. Where's the detent? Right there, man. See how that goes in? And how do you pull him out? You gotta just pull him out. Just pull him out straight. You gotta be willing, gotta be willing to do it. When I first was doing it, I wasn't willing to do it. See the little detent in there? Right there. Click, click. Stuka. Give him $200. You can have the spare pair. Click. It's titanium. It's a bargain at 200. Jose, you ever put him in backwards? Gentlemen, <laughs> that means you too. Uh, we're gonna have the meeting, please. Press reports after the contest. Guests that actually drove uh, their uh, visit. We're gonna try our best.
to make this a very good contest, especially a very safe contest. There are a few things that I have to mention about this new facility that we have. First, we have, from the cross that's marked on the pavement, we have 85 foot radius to the closest edge of the circle. Uh, that said, there's plenty of room for any long line airplane to fly and land safely. Uh, on landing, however, I would recommend not to stray away too much from the center because the carrier circles, the carrier landing pad, the carrier pad has about four hoops mm. or eye bolts that are sticking out and looking. They are eye bolts, so looking for your wheel pad. I've never done it, but I've never had a problem charging it, so I could have charged several hundred times already and never had that problem. You have to hot glue back together. You have to hot glue. If you controller doesn't have a switch, even if they have the same power, you wouldn't need that. Dave Eiskin's doing something with his tune pipe here, some secret stuff I don't know about. What, what is he doing over there? Ice skins! You have to set up your old, old What's he doing, Jose? Okay. We we'll use now this one for right away two minutes, which probably is not enough. How these guys can come? We use the other one for bleep today. Oh, this is funny. Which nobody uses. Sergio Zegris is teaching Mike Palco how to blow up a plane with an electric bomb. We're discussing features like this <laughs> Business? Hey, I'm your business rep. <laughs> I'm not taking care of business. <laughs> How am I supposed to be rich if you're giving Mike Palco all his free information? Charge him. He's giving me information so you can sell better. All right, keep doing it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I hear the cash register ring every time the phone rings. Thank Mike. Do I want to sell tune pipes or trimers? Pipes, timers. That we can use. Fly on tar. It lands itself. It lands good. Well, I have to figure out make up the points on the landing. Yeah. Be Rick Campbell's first official flight and expert. Oh, nice squeaky controls. All that money saves on oil. He can buy us lunch. Where be the judges at? That's a good question. Meanwhile, the fuel's draining out of the model. Ah, that's life. Let us know. Where, Rick, Wendy, where's the bathroom? The Wendy, you It's not There's bad. Not much, but it's, 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 it
And now it's starting to kick up just a little bit. You can see the flag is just starting to move. Rich Jacobone's putting his flag up. Buddy Reed is putting in the end of his flight. We just said goodbye to Sergio and Barbara. They're working on a special timer project with Mike Palco. We're gonna go back into the pits, hang out in the shade and have a soda. Looks like it's gonna be a great day. But that's an unusual bumper sticker and you know, I've been thinking about my fish since we lost our three big fish. Boy, oh boy. Hey, uh... Brian helped. <laughs> All right, buddy! Get out of here, please. I want you to get out. That's it. Thank you. No you got the best there. air of the day. Wait till you see what happens from this point in the day on. That was a good flight. Did you get me adjusting myself on film? Just for you. I figure if Wendy's videoing, I'm going to adjust myself. Yeah, exactly. And another nasty flyer from... To have you guys move it around. Okay. Um, yes, Carla. That's what you get when you get a sophisticated freaking Ferrari fly. Don't even know where the fling is. You from. like the that flag? The flag? You like the that flag? The wind is coming from. You don't know where the wind is coming. Get a real flag, man. Like a Subaru. Or hey, where's guy. your friend with the Ferrari? Can we go have pizza by his house? Has he got the Ferrari down there today? Yeah, I know. Everything in the same place. Um, you know, don't be a baby, you know. Dave. All Tough right. it out. Tough well, it out. I've got fuel issues. I have no idea. Hey, Dave, you let us know where you want to start all the maneuvers, all right? Thanks. So we can run. You can rock. Carlos needs to lose a little weight. Absolutely. All right, Carlos, let's rock. Yep. Dave Iskins, first official. Here at the Middlesex Ferrari Aerodrome. The Ferrari Aerodrome, look at this. Now this, this winter when we're freezing and building our Enzo and working down a cellar, paying $600 a month to heat the house, we'll be thinking back pop this DVD on and say, wow, what a summer it was. This is certainly gonna go down as one of the better days of the summer. Unbelievable. And I think it's safe to say we've added a new flying site to our uh, repertoire here. We will be, we're being a, metal, a member of the Middlesex Club for 10 years already, 11 years actually, and I just, I just can't imagine we're not going to be coming down here at some point in time. A really nice sight. They drove four and a half hours to come to the meet, so I'm glad that we're having a good day to share with them.
You're a brilliant man, Palco. You caught me on a good. In a day. matter, in a matter of uh, well, we already got the mold finished. It just mm -hmm. it's up in New Hampshire. It's not here. Not that shape, of course, but the shape that like traditional shape. What yep. size? Two. Two. Dave, Dave's already got the plug finished. Got any uh, one and three quarter cup? Um, my arm. But it's personal. No, you do it personal. Where's Mike? Where's Mike? You need a special launch guy for this? No, no. I'm just going to get. Oh, Mike's got yeah. it. I'll get yeah, some of this. What kind of fuel do you use? No, no nitro? No nitro FAI fuel. Okay. And how many ounces? A lot of combat guys are used to nail it when they try to fly stunt then. When you see this 90, Jose, you, you donate a test plane and I'll let you take it to Flushing for a week. Just, just drop it off at my house, even if I'm not there. I'll have the motor in it that afternoon. <laughs> Don't you know how I managed to get motors in? Remember Big Jim? Oh no, you'll never get that motor in there. No, 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 no. <laughs> that morning we're flying. This motor, when you put it on a bench and run it, yeah, you can put your finger on a glow plug. It doesn't even vibrate. It's so smooth, smooth as glass. I can't wait. What's the challenge with the bigger lines? None. What Tiger Cat flew on big lines? I even got them oh, made already. Yeah, yeah, you gotta fly them. In a couple more weeks, you'll have the fence. Nice. You know what this reminds me of Jose when Suarez was painting his plane in the Roberts Motel between rounds at the team trials. He came in the morning. He had one checkerboard. The afternoon, two checkerboards. <laughs> then he had half his AMA numbers on. Jose, let us know where you want to, uh, when you're putting <laughs> yeah, your maneuver. Take maneuvers. a guess where you want to Let us know where you're going. It feels like nothing down here, but you get up there, it takes you right point out. once before you take off, and that's what We're it trying to have the town put a rail around here with a fast speed railing system. Guys, and we ready. just sit on. You were on. Stand here. Right here. I got my sharp shoes on, don't worry. I got my spurs on, right? Sportsman of the Year award. Jose Modesto's first official with the Yashenko plane. The shark. Every time I call it the shark, though, I keep thinking like, Will McFarlane, my, what was that all about? Uh-oh, here we go. Wind shift, wind shift. Now let's see if the Ferrari flag has shifted. No, so. Yeah, wind is shifting now. I feel it blowing in my face. Yeah, you can see the smoke blowing that way, so there you go. Falco, I think you should make an electric one of these Ukrainian things. Yeah. It could run on DC power, you know? <laughs> 220 volts. You could name it the Ukrainian Lightning. <laughs> Remember all 
off these lines right here, so I'll tell you. So it looks like we may have two people have uh, expressed interest in being part of our 90 test program and donating a, a ship with motor mount or nose construction, I should say, big enough that we can shoehorn that 90 in. Always a challenge. It's like putting a big block Chevy in a, uh, a plane made for a small block. But believe me, if there's one team of experts that can do it, it's Les Demet and his chainsaw crew. The model we really want is Banjok's Vista. That would be perfect. All we need is for Banjok to have a heart attack or something here. We'll grab the Vista and have the Rojet 90 in it before he comes back from the hospital. Mike, are you next? Oh, it's Dan, you. I'm three after you. I think later we're gonna to try to climb up on a tower here. See if we can get some footage from up there. That's kind of their racing pylon thing. Anyway, this is the first time we got to see Jose in his Ukrainian uh, Yashenko plane with the Discovery Power. I'm not sure, I gotta ask him, I think he has two of them. But again, I'm not sure. Midgley had ordered three of these. I don't think he ever got them. I don't know what that was all about. And obviously he's got a spare motor, so. Cool, one more dimension, one more variety to our event. Up next is gonna be Dan Banjok with the Vista, Sato 72.
You're, you're very correct. You but it's shady. One, brother. Yeah. There's two in between, right? What happened to Dombrowski? I thought Palco's in there. No? Okay, I'll go get ready. I guess I gotta go get ready. Next up, Ski Dombrowski, first official. We're gonna have to do a battery change here. We're running out of battery. You're up next? Yep. All right. Fuel up on the grass. Yep, keep it off the tarmac. Do not get that greasy oil on the, on the new tarmac. At least you don't have to worry about any of the bozo running a two-cycle engine while you're flying, huh? None of those nasty Dynajets. Yeah. Okay, this is a Gator. This is the same, actually, same prop that's on the Spitfire here, one of Doran's props. And what's the diameter? Ten and three eighths. Four Ten and three eighths. And and you've up pitched it. Yes. Okay, that's what I've done with the Spitfire. Okay. Okay. Good luck. We'll be able to hear the motor run. <laughs> this is nice. I just noticed this little foamy thing. I'm about due for one of these. Mine's 15 years old. Anybody just bought a computer wants to send me the free foam? Send me the empty box and I'll make one. Now, because there probably won't be any motors running, it's funny that Mike's got the same prop that I have on, on the, of course, less diameter and more pitch, but we've got our pitch up. And since Doran gets to see all these videos, Doran, more pitch. What are you laughing at? You couldn't find the wind either, so stop bullshitting everybody. Some pilot you are. I found all the wind, are you kidding me? We, we, we found where it wasn't. I didn't, I didn't miss one bit of wind. is going to give you a flying lesson, boy. When I, out here felt nice, but when I pulled for the wing over, mm -hmm. it was way off the wind over there. Because when I went up, the bird's like, Mur. I saw, yeah. I'm like, correcting, I'm correcting, but over here, yeah. it wasn't great, but it was... I'm going to try to stick over there. It seems to miss. Okay. Give him a flying lesson, Mike. <laughs> he did. He did an art contest. He should have been there. He won. Well, talk to Karen. I only get 23 of the summer weekends. All right, here we go. Automatic startup. For anybody who's never seen an electric flight, this is going to be Mike Falco's first official. If I understand what Dan said, he won the contest in Philly. Good chance he'll win today. This is a nice, nice field for electric. Ooh, sound of that tail whip. Buy him can of three-in-one oil. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, now y'all, I won't talk so you can hear the engine. Sergio Zegras timer, outrunner motor. You probably will hear the people in the background talking. It's already done. All right, I got a fuel up, so we'll miss Pat Mikey's landing. Rich Jacobone, first official. Rich has some kind of starting battery issue, I'm not sure. Who's up next? I don't know, I see Johnny again. Operator. My favorite, the real men fly Stregas. I'm waiting for Mr. John Brodak to send me my ARF Strega, and I'm gonna show you guys how good a Strega can fly. You guys are gonna be jealous. I believe the Stregas are good planes. Oh, man. Hey, if you get bored with it, I'll make a 90 test plane out of yours. Give me the heaviest one, no problem. 
time picking up the brick. <laughs> Stevie's flies real good. What are you talking about? I'm expecting more from you, Steve. I want to see more. Okay. Come on, give us a show. You got to make the Stragas look good. I got to sell some more kits or some more ARFs or something. <laughs> more videos, I don't know. What we're going to do while Rich is over there, Brian's going to take the prop. Not The prop was loose at backfight. We'll, we'll hide the tip of his spinner or something and say, oh, he'll be looking in the grass like a dog looking for a bone. <laughs> Meerkat manor here. Yeah, then he flies and crashes. And no, 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 we better not. He's lubed up. He wants to win this meet. And Midsley's wife said, now see, if I was going to leave you, it would be for that kind of thing. <laughs> felt about like this tall. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's funny. Your wife leaves you for an 87-year-old guy. <laughs> uh, it's different if they leave you for a 27-year-old. Right. Or a guy with a real Ferrari. Uh, hey, there you go. A real, real Ferrari. Elmore Not a that are tuned called the 12-year-old boy. <laughs> okay, it's John Diotavio, the man who people leave their wives for John. All right, Buddy Weeder gives him a launch. The amazing Buddy Weeder, the hero of everybody over 60 years old, John Datavio. Come on, Johnny. Poor Rich Jacobone, who was up before this, he had a dead battery, then he flooded it, and then the prop came loose. So I imagine Rich is good and rattled, but he's gonna step up to the plate on the next flight. He's gonna show us the metal that he's made of, forged from titanium and pepperoni. Be careful, John. We got some shifty air. Yeah, the air is dying up there. Make right hey, buddy, wait, wait. Yeah. You got thermals coming off of that blacktop, too, you know. Uh -oh. Back up, baby. Come on, John. You know, if you were a great guy, you know what you would do, buddy? I was just thinking of this. How about this for an idea? I'll tell you what, when the Strega ARFs come out, yeah. how about if me, you, and Jackabone split one and give it to them? We don't even have to split it. I don't have my life. Well, like well so do I, but what I'm saying is why he won't buy one. Yeah. Why don't we get together and buy him a Strega ARF? And then I'm gonna take this plane and we're gonna hide it. <laughs> hey, this plane's what, 30 years old now or something? Oh, look at this wind. Yeah, the wind's getting them. We got some crazy, the wind's, it was hockey on my flight too. It was getting crazy. It was yeah. behind me and everything. I never did so much backpedaling in one flight in my entire life. Yeah, but that's how you learn how to fly. I know you can't believe that fly. Well, that's why we put the flag up. But you know what? You need a flag on both sides of the field. What Jacobone should have done is put his flag on this side. Because what's happening, the wind is coming over the tree. Yeah. And then it's separating. When I did the wing over, I popped it, and I, I saw the plane. It just drifted off to one side. I said, oh, man. Yeah. That tree, see, the air has come. This is a pretty big tree, by the way. The air is coming over that tree, over the fence. This air is worse than the circle burner's field. Nah, nothing's Look worse. This. Look at this. Oh. Did he bail out? Good move. Oh boy, John. Just bail out. Live to fight another day.
Then plus you got the sun right in your eyes too, as if the wind isn't enough. Yeah. Strega Arfs. I don't think he gave it to me like this. I can clean it up. I can I can clean it up. That's sure? no problem. I'll yeah. give you another one. Nah, don't worry about it. I tried. What work. works good? I'm going to tell you what works good. Now, see, good thing we got this on video. This is an APC. See, it says 14.4 W. The 14.4 oh, narrow. They make an N. Oh. That works even better, and it's lighter. I was using that on the uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was doing tests, and it worked good on a Testarossa and on a Spitfire. Both had a nice wide range. And what are these like? They're cheap anyway. Well, I tried five to order six one. bucks. I tried to order you a new one from Brodax, and they didn't have them. They're back orders. <laughs> okay, batteries charged, props tight. Now, all I want to see is the landing, because I bounced my landing. So now I know you're out to get me. The competitive edge. I don't feel good about this. Rich Jacobone. Time to prove what you're made out of. Step up to the plate. Swing that bat. Brian, you gotta, we gotta, if he bat lands without bouncing, we gotta give him a standing ovation. Poor Rich, he's taking such abuse from us. Actually, you know something, it's better when the wind blows, because at least you know where it's blowing from. The worst is when you can't feel which way it's blowing from. Oh, it changed, oh, geez, wow. Now, you see where this is gonna hurt him right now? Because he's got too much pitch in his prop. Now, if it starts going lean and the plane is not exactly where it should be, so it's gonna whip up. See? You see it whipping up? That's going a lot faster than it was when the air was calm. So when you factor in the prop pitch, you gotta factor in how much whip up am I giving up for that drive? I think he, he's got this at five and a half. I think that's too much. He's got another prop that It should be less, yeah. Mine is four and a half. But, but that, it's real nice when it doesn't go lean or the wind doesn't blow, but boy, when you get on a lean side and the wind starts blowing, you're dead. Just goes for a rocket ride. <laughs> you should have told them, make sure you look at the shiny side. Now the motor is right where it wants to be. It's right, it's right on a 2-4 brake, except it's going too fast. To me it looks like it's fast anyway. See, he's having trouble holding the bottoms. At this speed, you see how it gets away from you? A little bit slower, it's easier to hold the bottom. That fence was making me crazy. It looked like I was, and the middle of the field is about two feet higher than the edge. See, it's like a, pitch, like a pitcher's mound is. So you're looking down at the guy launching a plane. It's kind of weird. I probably did that for water run. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's the correct way to make it, but... Well... It's, the idea is, if you practice here a couple days, you get used to it. But right now, 
Yeah. We're at 12, the big... And Palisade Park used to do that to me. Right, Kids. right. Oh, yeah, Pal Park's like that, too. And all of a sudden, the dip will come in and it feels like the pal. It is just too much whip up here. It's just not impossible to fly, but it's difficult. Yeah, the other prop would be better today. The five would be better. Because the motor's right where it should be. You can't really screw with the motor. Oh, didn't leave out the hourglass. That's a good, a good sign. Well, oh, there's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Isn't that something? I, I said, when he moved it, I said, you ought to get a tattoo on your butt cheek with the hourglass. <laughs> and a mirror so you can see it during the flight. Now, if he gets a bounce-free landing, I have to eat crow. A lot less than you. A lot less than you. All right, Richard! Woo! Nice landing! And the day grinds on with the air moving around, swirling, doing whatever. Everybody's getting different air. But it's really turning out to be a nice day. How old is he? Bite a muffin. Ah. He's a vicious dog. <laughs> that collar's doing him in too. I love beans. <laughs> he's a he's a sixties dog. Yeah. Anyway, as the day went on, the wind is blowing now. Really blowing. In fact, we're outside. Scuderia Ferrari flags here. So here we just make a buggy run down to McDonald's for the, the wealthier people. The people that sit in the shade and enjoy the day all day. Well, what do you got to say for yourself? Thank you. <laughs> what else did I say? Give me potatoes and... Look at this, how bad is life? It's great. Look, you got educated people like Larry Scarinzi on one side of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cultivated people like Buddy Weider. Oh, man. You got all the McDonald's you can eat. What a guy. And watching Krug hey, fly. And watching Krug fly. <laughs> I mean, this is entertainment at the highest. Mickey Mouse wouldn't be this good. Okay, so let's see what you got here, baby. Get this thing out of the way. Let's get all, put that out in the parking lot. That's, we've seen that already. Yeah, that was been The around. Akaruba. Yeah. All right, now that's my original bomber mold. Right. And that's the original shell I made for Mike Costello. And you got the original drawings. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to see this thing like next season, huh? Yeah. Either next to the one right after. Depends okay, on that's the A26 mold. That's no... This is the top there. Right? Yeah. Or the bottom, rather. Nicely made carbon okay. fiber a la Windy. That's all on a Windy uh, videos. Okay, and Every two, step. The two cowls are home. Okay. And these are all the other things I got. Well, we can make more cowls if you, you know, if yeah, you needed I, cows. I these are all templates I gave Mike. Right. And don't throw any of it oh, away. No, I'm not. Everything's right You know, Chris, there. there's another guy who wants to build a bomber. No, I'm not going to get nothing. Get rid of it. Hey, if you finish this, you will be the hit of it. Your band jack will just go crazy. Well, I intend to finish it. No, there's no there's no part of this. You, the wing is done, right? The wing is done. There's no flaps on it, but I did. But they're making a the flat. You can't, you, got, you can't do that until you make the nacelles. Right. you got to do it in the cells first, then because they fit in between. Right. I have uh, a piece of the right wing of the other one that Sleepy had. I got okay, that. I was right. looking at it. So. Right, I gave pieces. Uh, John Cafaro has the rudder. 
If yeah. you want a rudder free, we'll, we'll, well get I, it back I, from him. Just to measure, just so, uh, you know. He can make an outline in cardboard. Uh, that, I think I have the real drawing. I, I will look. When I get this, home. Is this what the stabilizer one side That's is? it. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's it. No, that's uh. And I have some of the ribs. He had made uh, evidently a section of uh, leading edge about that long, but there's like a half a dozen, maybe a dozen ribs yeah. made in it. See what it looks like. You're going to need some, like some, some inspiration. What is the nacelles? Right, because there's there's some templates in here, some round. Now, luckily, the 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 nacelles are constant section. Right. They, they're they're like a like a like a chief vico. There you go. Yeah, that's the thing I from behind need to, it. I need to know the order all this stuff goes in and how far and that kind of thing. And then you got to start cutting out pieces for when right. it go, hits the wing right. and leave yourself enough room for the tanks. That I guess is the rudder. Yeah, I, I may have a spare set of gas tanks for this too. I'll look. Of course, okay. the tanks were in the plane when it crashed. All right. And they, I don't think they got... I'll have to look. And then there's... There's these kind of templates like this, which I right. guess it has something to do with right. the wing cutout. Maybe. Right. Yeah, that's all. Okay. I just I need to know how to do all of that kind of thing. What you're got, what you're going to need is when you start putting the nacelles on, there's probably eight, ten of the videos. Right. That you're gonna or just make it easy on yourself. Right. Yeah. There's. I mean, you could you could do it any way. You could make profile no, no, nacelles. I, I, I don't want profile. I want to do it like you did. No, and it it'll fly yeah. good. Believe me, this was a good flying plane. Well, I, I watched it. I, yeah. I thought it was you nice. saw it fly at Brodax, right? I saw it when you first flew it down okay. here. Yeah, and I thought it was the prettiest and of the three of them. So I, will ask, I will ask John Cofrower to trace the rudder. Okay. Because he has the rudder. All right. The tail, I, and I have landing gear for it. Okay. I have a set of landing gear. That, that, that already have the, the wheels that are all hollowed out and everything. I should have brought them today. Oh, well. But I'll find them for you. And I have the nose wheel. Okay. So we'll. I need to know how to build all that. Yeah, stuff no, no. Stuff. Hey, that's that's 50, 60 hours just making those landing gear with all the curves well, in them, no and doubt. you know they got the little oleos and the, the yeah, strut. Yeah, I saw them. Uh, now that I know you're serious about this, all right. I will, uh, you know, call me anytime and and let's get on board with right. finishing you get, it. You get whatever you think. And you it's have the, to have. the bell crank and everything's in there. It's solid the bell crank as a rock. Is in the wing. That's yep. done. The wing is sheeted. Yep. Uh, there's no. Uh, Nothing on the end. The carbon rod just sticks out. So what I need to know too. You need to make okay. You need a horn. You need to know what size horns. Right. The ratios I got all that stuff. Okay. I got. And if I don't, I'll have it made. That stuff I need to know all how to do that. Need to know the width here, which obviously we know, and then go out about an eighth of an inch on each side for the uh, the center horn. And then when you finish the nacelles, you need to make that center horn wide enough to go around the nacelles. Okay. You know the joints it, but it's not a problem. There's there's no and you need lucky boxes. Right. Only at the only at the fuselage you need lucky. Out at the, the nacelles you can glue them together. Yeah, I saw they were kind right. of solid right. on, the, on the piece of the right wing that I have. Right. And uh, boy, you know what would have been not, and I and I'm sorry I didn't do this. I was giving away pieces of this. Yeah. I should have saved the whole thing. Because you could have measured it, if nothing else. Yeah, well, that's kind of what I had. I looked at the nacelles. Right, right. I know right. what he means now when he said it was circular. Cause no, uh, flat spot when you there. yeah the well. It, it makes it a lot easier because you can make skins. What I did with the B25, that's not constant section. Right. And then you need these little sticks, and each one's got, oh my God, it's yeah. like a Berkeley kit. Yeah. Never <laughs> do that like again. Yeah. Oh, no, I would have carved blocks before I did that again. But the, uh, this carbon fiber, though, this is ready to go, and you got the bottom piece. I got just the bottom. That's yeah, you're all set. You got the top shell. Yep. When that has the formers in it, you'll may be amazed how stiff it is. It has two uh, two nose cones for it. Right. Two cowls. And I still have the mold for the cowls. If you run out of, okay. or if you if you somehow have an accident, have a problem. Yeah, yeah, we got cowls. That's no problem. All right. Boy, that'll be neat seeing that. You're gonna bring tears to my eyes. Yeah. Now, this is what I always do, though. I always make you put it on video. You will commit to next year at Brodac. Right. We're gonna see it fly. That, or it. else we're gonna hit you on the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> Your daughter's gonna give you a night it's out. <laughs> no, this yeah, would be if great. I, if I can get it done for next year, I'll have it. If not, it'll definitely be there for the year. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Brodax, that's where this will be on show. Oh, yeah. I definitely. Now, what do you got for motors? I'll probably wind up using FP40s. That's what I have. Or 35, either ones. Is that burn? Six and a half. It's not so bad. That's what, about a 14 inch prop? It's a 14 inch three blade Doran prop. I didn't realize Mikey Palco is using the same prop. Of course, cut down and repitched, but it's the same prop. That's an excellent prop. We've had really good luck, especially in the last month or so. Now, the next step on this is to replicate it a few times. Yeah.
Well, we didn't stay till the end. We didn't stay for the second round, in fact, for a couple of reasons. One of which is Karen wants to go see World Trade Center tonight. The movie just opened. She got some tickets. And we're going to try to get cleaned up and go see what Oliver Stone has done with his uh, the movie about the World Trade Center. Something Karen and I feel uh, pretty emotional about since we live so close to it. Um, looking forward to seeing if it's a very high quality movie. It's supposed to be a very good movie. Anyway, good meet. Thanks to Carlos Serra, everybody in the Middlesex Club. It was truly a nice day. Uh, we had a really good time at the meet yesterday. Rich and I are waiting for a call from Dub. We're going to go pick him up at the train station and hopefully have a nice lunch, hang out with Donna and Jub for a while. But in the meantime, looks like we got air for three or four flights before it's lunchtime. And this three blade prop just keeps getting better and better and better. This is one of the more pleasant surprises of the development we've done this summer. Really pleasant. Between Rich's prop and this prop, we've been real lucky. Now the only thing I found out from Rich, he stayed at the Middlesex later than I did, but Brian crashed his plane yesterday, so I guess we're uh, Brian will start flying one of his other planes. He's got a Cardinal, too. Now, as we wait to uh, run down and pick up Dub and Donna, I've been monitoring your fish, and it looks like two of the big fish have made it, and we're just as, as grateful as can be that we didn't lose them all. And we still don't know exactly what it was, but... Looks like two of them are gonna be fine. I don't know. We had a sad couple of days when we lost those fish. Anyway, we're going to have lunch with Dub and Donna. They're up here from Houston. What, me? Everybody says that you have Henry Nelson make these engines. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of Nelson yeah. ports in these engines. Yeah, that's right. He, he picks through and gets me the very, very special ones. The best ones. Yeah, that's right. Now, Rich, is this, gonna, is this yeah. engine you want me to break this in for you tomorrow? No. You're not going to break it in? We could put it right in my Spitfire today and break it right in for you. So you guys are going to yep. fly again tomorrow? There it is. Got, we got fly it. every day. Comes, it comes in the appropriate packaging. packaging. Right. The jet crying towel. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Packaging. It is a little bit. That was a great lunch, by the way, Rich. I, uh, yeah, it was good. I have to admit, now it's a I don't care what Rich Peabody says about you. I care what Brett Buck says about you on the internet. The food is absolutely wonderful. All right, so this is the 70, the 76, and, and he's got a, a 65 too? this is a 65. All right. The 65 is mine. 65, yeah, how can we do it? Hey, this is Complete. great. She's going to the Nationals, you go to Brodak, you go So Rich, how much do you want for the 65? Well, I don't know if I'm going to sell it now. Well, you don't have a choice. It's in my hand. How are you going to get it back? <laughs> The thing I want to know is how are you going to get this back if I decide to keep it? Dub, these guys have too much fun. But this is, they're just having too way much too fun. Much, way too Absolutely. much. Absolutely. You should see Rich when he has a no, bottle of wine no, at the Rich, field. This is too far away. I, I promise you, this is a primo engine. You use this. Oh, no, from Wendy, I only This is mine now? Rich? He said I can have the 76 too. We live too far away. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Rich Oliver. Rich Oliver and Yeah, oh, that's nice. Rich, you want me to take both of them? You don't need an engine yes, now. See Bill Rutherford and his wife. You just need a case to build a crutch. His wife. It's from up here. From the book. No, wait. This is a book. Dubjet has authored a book. No, no, no. That's not Dub true. It's the book I always wanted to write. The book is, it's, go ahead. That, that should be about control line stunt right there. <laughs> well, I, yeah, it says here on the side. Uh, uh, yeah, just have it on your shelf is worth something. A definitive description of, of control line stunt. Oh, geez. The rules for control line stunt. Yes, yes. The politics of control line stunt. <laughs> now, when I get up this morning, they're predicting a couple of days of rain, and they haven't disappointed us. And we really do need the rain, so well, I guess I'm happy to uh, to have a day I can do some some of the things I still wanted to test before this season is out. Now, because we had such good luck, uh, uh, and I thought it was exceptional luck with the Spitfire, with that little notch tank, I decided I'd make another one up. And what I did, I made another one up, put the same notch in it, and there's no point repeating that. Cleaned it. I need to shim it now. And what this allows this allows, number one, a little bit larger tank, two-tenths of an inch bigger, 
and it also allows the tank to get up closer to the motor which I think in my case gets a, uh, a better motor run so I get a little more fuel capacity a little better run and the tank is only two grams heavier so I was real happy to know that uh, that it works so well in a Spitfire and it, it had exactly the same shim so this one is an exact copy of it they, these two are pretty much exactly the same except for on when it's a Testarossa it vents the uniflow vents in a different spot just because the tubing is so so convoluted up in the front so tight anyway I'm going to use this rainy day to do replace the tank and because we're going to get ready to go to Midgley's at the end of this week may not get to test fly this I don't know but I wouldn't go up there without a day of testing because even a carbon tank will always have some little there's always a danger you'll get a lean run so there's always a good chance it's always a good investment to uh, have the first couple of runs rich. We're expecting Elliot Scott here later this week. In fact, i got to look at the calendar. I think it's today. <laughs> I'm forgetting what day he's coming here. They'll leave him stranded at the airport. But anyway, and then the next thing is going to be we're going to start putting the selection of Doran props onto the Testarossa because we have Richard's prop developed to where it's really a good benchmark. And now the next step is we want to have a complementary set of three blades and maybe even a four blades. Now the trick is we do have another spinner, but I have to paint it. So this spinner can handle two blades and four blades. Let me get up a close on this. Dave Midgley already has the, the plug for the mold finished. And so probably a week after we get back from our vacation, we're going to be able to mold spinners. And of course, anybody that wants one, we'll... Uh, We'll consider making a few of them. We don't have any back plates. We're going to have to find somebody to make the back plates and the tips. I'm not sure who that will be right now, but I certainly uh, I'm amazed. And I've done this test enough to know that it's always amazing. Anytime I get some weight out of the nose, I can always use it to my advantage. Of course, the plane gets overall lighter. In this case, it's almost. By the time you count up all the hardware and the nuts and bolts and washers and everything, it's almost an ounce lighter. If I want to be a half ounce lighter, I can actually use Richard's back piece on this. But I'm going to, I'm going to for right now, I want to pursue having this with the CG further back, the leadouts a little further back, and the wheel pants. And then the last thing we're going to have to do on this is going to be because we've changed the vertical CG. Remember, removing weight on top, adding weight on the bottom we're going to need a little flap tweak somewhere when we get a day where we can really fine tune this at the field. So that's the plan today. I want to get the tank in at least at least somewhere today get the tank in. The wheel pants worked out just perfectly. The tail wheel height I thought that was just perfect. And again if I don't get a test on this we'll just take the Spitfire up to, uh, to Dave's. It, it doesn't really matter but I don't want to take an untested piece of hardware and spend my vacation changing hardware. I'd like to go up there and just have a day of helping the guys in New England and well we always enjoy interacting with them. And seeing how nice the wheel pants worked out well that was one of the pleasant surprises of the summer including getting the, we now have several choices of props that work well and trying to get them to work even better in the, the rest a little bit of the flying season we have left. That'll be a nice goal. Now I'm always amazed when I pull this apart just how clean it all is. Now see this is the little divot that we were trying to avoid and I ground that down and had... It, it's risky just having this so close to the header with just JB Weld. But what I wanted to do is I want to shim the tank up about another sixteenth and I know it'll hit the header or if it doesn't hit it'll be so close it'll be picking up too much heat. And you always want to leave a little clearance in there. So that's once I get this replaced, that's what this will allow this to do. And we know it worked well on a Spitfire. I didn't have to really do too much changing around. I'm always amazed how clean this stuff is when I take it apart. It's Well, it's because I do the maintenance on a regular basis, too. I don't wait until it's an oil-soaked sponge before I go in there. But even in here, this I don't even think oil's ever touched that. That's really nice and clean. You always get oil up around the edges here, but... That's really stayed. Now this is a whole season of a pretty aggressive flying. I think the finish has finish has held up pretty. Now as I'm putting this all back together, I just want to make sure that this fits. I may have to fly it with the bottom off. This is one of the things we're going to test. 
what I have to do is get another header, an older header, and move this up because it hits the wing back here. But obviously if I move this up two inches, and I'm pretty sure, and I gotta see Midgley this weekend, that you gotta put some kind of a mount. You just can't have that flapping around back there. And of course that's why Sergi, this is from Sergi Belko. This is why he, uh, and this one's been modified by the way, by Bob Zambelli put a bigger stinger. This is a 375. But when we had that exact setup in a Spitfire, that was really nice. It gave a nice, a deep throaty sound without being offensive. And it, ba and it basically wasn't a big hit in power. But while I have it apart, I want to test one of my pipes that I just finished that's got a, a 410 stinger. I just want to make sure that I'll get one day of flying on this and then put the pipe that normally belongs in the Testarossa. Because I can be swapping two things while I'm doing while I'm doing a tank shim and of course that's the that's the trick now is I've gone right up against the header. You can just about get a little piece of sandpaper in there. And I want to know if I've gone too far. If I don't if I'm not gonna know until I fly this. If I know I've gone too far, then it's real simple. As I move the tank closer to the mounts, everything is, is not a problem. It's when when you want to raise the tank and it runs into the header. That's where you run into a with any tank you run into a problem. But that's the whole that's the whole thing we're striving for is to do a lot of testing before the season ends, so we're gonna have a lot of hopefully a lot of choices when we actually start next year's plane. Now oh, hey, finally, finally after a long look, Elliot Scott turned up some so these are Medusa spinners. You can see the carbon work in them. And he found four of them, actually. Four or five, I'm not sure. But these are the ones he already sent me, and I think he's going to be able to get a couple more. And what we want to do is, see, this is a two-blade one. We want to, we have the choice of the real pointy cone, and we're going to be making a mold of these. I think we're going to make one of each style. I'm not sure. Again, the other thing we can do is we can mold any style as long as we can make an aluminum or, or a real precision plug. And if we ever get off our duff and get this, uh, this lathe working, kind of embarrassed to admit I don't have it working yet. Anyway, what I wanted to see, because these parts, first off, I want to clean them with M600. And thank you, Bob Brookins, for sending us some M600, or we wouldn't have any. Because we're not getting any here, that's for sure. I wanted to take a little piece of 600 sandpaper, sand this, and just see how our Testarossa red is going to cover. Now, I only have about a four ounce jar of that red left, and John Brodak is looking to make a, a color for Brodak dope of Testarossa red, Ferrari red. So I hope Bob Brookins can get him some, otherwise I'll just have to send him one of these spinners or something. I really thought I had more, but I've been painting little parts and painting wheel pants and things. Now, before I paint anything carbon fiber, I want to really clean it. This is probably has release agent on it. Doesn't look like this one's ever been on a plane. And this one, a nice part is we have some two blades and some three blades, and I already have a four blade on the plane. So we're pretty well covered here. And once I get all this lightweight hardware on the front of the plane, it really makes a significant, and I, and again, I wish I had this at the Nats, uh, just, just run out of things to do, you run out of time, you run out of life is what happens. Now even this little aluminum tip, I'm going to take this outside and paint it and see how this, the red usually covers pretty well, so it's not a problem. I don't want to get any sharp edges off of it, too. And the M600, hopefully, if there's any wax or grease or fingerprints on here, we can get rid of this. And then when we get to, when we get done with this, we're on our way to Newark Airport to pick up Elliot. Elliot's going to be here for better part of a week. And then we're going to head up to Midgley's. And we have some pretty cool stuff coming in the next couple days. And I'm looking forward to it. It'd really be nice if, you know, if John Brodak starts making this one of the colors in his, in his collection, which makes it easy for us. And one other good little tip. I just did this off camera and I thought, yeah, maybe I should put this on camera. Before you ever paint any spinner, of course, you want to clean it. You want to have it totally clean and everything. Degreased. 
But the other thing is you want to make sure your prop cutouts fit with plenty of clearance because what happens is once you paint this, then when you go to open up the prop cutouts, the paint starts to chip on the corners. So I've checked this. I've got the tip ready. We're ready to go out and spray. Now, I'm not so sure what always happens to, uh, to poor Elliot. Every time he has a flight in here, I think it's probably that he looks, looks like a terrorist or something. They always give him a hard time, and whenever I've gone down there, it's always an adventure picking him up at the airport. Now you can see, this is what's nice about this color right over black. I'll probably put two coats on. But the point is, on a spinner, you want to have the paint as thin as possible. You don't want to have 20 coats of clear and everything. Because the thicker the paint is, the more prone it's going to be to chip off. The thinner you can get it on, as long as I get the color the way I want it. All I need to get is the color. I want to get around the edges. So it doesn't start to peel and chip around the edges. And I've got four of these to do, so... I'm going to get busy so this paint can kind of be drying while I'm down at the airport. All right, so we picked up Elliot at the airport. They didn't detain him for any uh, terrorism plot. And we want to see what he's going to do with... He's been accumulating stuff in the garage for the last year. Let's see what we got. So we, we're going to do a quick repair on the ARF. This, this was cra Where'd you crash this? At Brodax? We're going to just piece this together and then because we have clamp mounts on this, see what makes this nice is clamp mounts. Zip, boom, bang, and we'll have any motor. In fact, we can put the motor from there or we can just put one or the other. We can put another motor in this plane too so you don't have to change your motors at the field. It only takes a minute to change them. So you'll have two planes tomorrow. What else you got in there? Get those ARFs out of there. There's two of them. Yeah. Make sure they're the right ones. Inventory control here on ARFs. We always store all the ARFs way in the back, in a black hole in space. Anyway, we're going to try to, re the next thing is we're going to try to repair this and get geared up for a couple other little projects that Elliot wanted to do while he was here. And you right, remember we used old Rosé for our test plane for our Z-Tron and for bar stock engine testing, four-stroke engine testing, so we've certainly gotten some use for them. Elliot brought some real nice sea grain wood here for making flaps for next year's plane. And we're trying to start to at least accumulate the stuff that we're going to need next year for next year's ship. Okay, so we got this guy cleaned up. We retaped the hinge lines. Next step on this, and this isn't, hasn't even been wiped off since it crashed. I got to see how that wing is going to, if it's going to go back together or if we're going to have to do something to it. Obviously, the first step is we're going to have to take off some of that monocoat. So the first thing is we pulled off the monocoat around where the broken joint is and just ran some thin CA in there. First thing we want to do is tack this in place. Just hold it for another minute till it starts stiff. Is it is it stiff yet? Seems like it. Might okay. Be, I'm not going to take the risk. We just want it tacked. Yeah. Let it let it kick off without kicker. Or, or with Q-tip it'd be better. Here we did the same thing on the top. Now the idea is just to tack it in place. Because once it's tacked in place, we have to make sure everything's straight, that we don't have it in crooked or the hinge line facing forward or something. It looks like it went back pretty well together, though. These things are pretty durable, by the way. Okay, now we're using this just to keep tension off of it while I glue sets a little better. That horn is broken. We're going to pull the monocote up off of there. And then try to jig the pieces back in if you can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jig them in and CA them. And never glue a prop blade back on. That is not good. <laughs> I just have to say this because I see Elliot here's, thinking, here's we I have the blade. Here's one of the I, think, I think we could just glue it on with one drop of Ambroid, huh? Okay, we had to reinsert the, the control horn, dig a ditch, put it back in. I think we're going to need a new piece of fuel line tubing. This, this definitely looks like... <laughs> like you're going to have trouble starting this engine. You can grind that flat. That's not going anywhere. These are only 332nd horns in here. That won't be it. And just make look from the back. Make sure they're level. Pick it up. Sight it. See if it's level. Is it level? Mm -hmm. Get it level before you break it again. 
and then we'll start working on repairing the wing permanently. We just got it tacked in position now. Okay, Elliot's mixed up a couple ounces of epoxy. We're going to use some four ounce glass cloth to put a fillet top and bottom on this. Hopefully get good penetration in there. We sanded down, got rid of most of the monocoat. And I, I hope that'll, uh, that'll be a fine repair then. All right, so all you got to do, just, just keep a little bit of heat on it. You'll feel it start to go to gel. You know what that feels like, like when you mold yeah. a part. Elliot's been molding, he brought some parts. What are those, uh, vector parts? It's, uh, he made some molded vector cowls. We'll look at those later. Well, actually, we're coming up on the end of the video here. So we're not going to get to do too much more. But we got several days of good adventures. Just keep moving the heat. Don't leave it in one spot. The heat lets the epoxy penetrate better, too. And build yourself up a little fillet. And most of all, push that corner in. See, because the fiberglass always wants to come out of the corner. That's why you don't use carbon fiber. The carbon fiber would want to go into that corner. You know, we want to make a radius. There you go. Just keep poking in there. When we're all done, you can cut and sand that off and put a little bit of paint on it. Yeah, that'll be fine. We'll be flying this tomorrow. There's no problem. What else we need? A prop? Need and a some prop? fuel line tubing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Convenient, huh? So what was the thinking there with the... Uh Spray the fuel straight on the engine. I hope you didn't hurt that tank. That's the only thing. I don't have a spare for that tank. Well, if worse comes to worse, we'll just have to run a hobby shop and buy a tank for this. Oh no, the other plane has the, the has the other tank. Okay, no problem. So we're going to take two planes to the field tomorrow. If you crash both of them, I leave you at the field. Thanks. Crash one, you get a half a ride home. Then we throw you out of the car. And if you don't crash at all, hey, it could happen. I don't crash when you. It could happen. Sorry, that's not a good idea. Test the rooster in his resplendent spinners. All the spinners are over here drying. This is for Miss Ellie. Uh, Where'd that come from, Brodak? Yeah, this came from, uh, it looks like it's come from John Brodak. From John Brodak, okay, okay, and what does it say? It says, we think you were unfairly judged in the ladies' basic flight competition. So let me see, what is the award? You got the Spirit of Miss Ellie Award here? The Travel Award. The Travel Award. <laughs> what is that for? Probably because you're an illegal immigrant, that's why. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Thank you very much, John. That's awesome. Oh, Thank my you. God. That's really great. I didn't know I was with great people <laughs> here. Let's go see if that glue is dry. Bring that. Bring the orphan. Okay. Come on, you're done screwing up my computer here. Anyway, one of the other items we're going to look at, Elliot's been molding up these. These are vector. What are these? Vector cowlings? Yeah, they're vector cowls. They just need the edges painting on. Okay, so he's got a mold now. If anybody's got a vector, they want a vector cowl. And he's got a crutch in case it rains in the next couple of days. We'll build a fuselage. And he better put a new prop on. I don't want you gluing those prop blades back. But this is what Elliot does best, is take my computer and turn it into a nightmare. So for the rest of the night, we're going to be playing computers. Now we're busy loading up everything but the kitchen sink here for what we hope is going to be a get up early day tomorrow. Elliot Scott's our house guest here. We're going to try to get up real early, beat the birds to the feeder. I see my boys are already at the feeder tonight. But anyway, we did a repair on the last tape. Got this guy back in action after being crashed. We have another test plane that Elliot's basically going to be spending some time learning different parts of the pattern he'd like to work on. We're going to load up, and tomorrow is supposed to be a spectacular day.
And by the way, Brian, just so you know, I'm 61 today. <laughs> Rich is putting up the flag. Yeah, we fixed the fence already. Somebody drove into the fence. We already had one of our, uh, our lovely people drive into the fence. All right, you ready to fly? Yeah, you good? Let's see if that fiberglass holds. I won't be standing downwind. Hey, 61. Oh, pretty soon, so security. Hey, today. All right. Getting better. Always difficult learning inverted flight. Time to be fooling around. One of us gotta work. That's right. One of us gotta work. That's right. Work? It's my birthday. I shouldn't have to work and do internet stuff and take abuse from Elliot. It really is my birthday, so anybody doesn't know it, I made it to 61 without uh, without the R frying. Uh, gotta richen it up a little bit. As the Ferrari flag droops, we're going to have a birthday party tonight to die for. Karen even got a big cake. Anyway, Brian brought out his Cardinal. He unfortunately lost his uh, legacy yesterday. Uh, I shouldn't say yesterday, two days before at the contest. A broken line and looks like we got one flight out of the R for Eddie. You always get your money's worth out of these. Never, it never ceases to amaze me how many flights you can get out of these things. Started getting some flying in there. When, are you, uh, when did you get here? Uh, yesterday. Oh, you did get here? Yeah. Let's clean the fuel filter, back flush it. You know how to do that, right? You think that's what it was? Yeah, oh, it picked up junk and run it richer. It was just going too fast. Magnum 36. Monitor. When that was crashed, it obviously had some dirt in there. And even that tubing that we took off might have had some dirt. But look in your hand and see what comes out. You know, blow out of it backwards. It's his John, I'm 61 and you're and you're 71. What are you, 71, John? Yeah. yeah. 71. I thought so. I'll buy that in there. Yeah. What happened? Brian had crashed after I had left the Middlesex contest, and uh, actually Sleepy crashed too. So. I didn't, I wasn't there during either one of the crashes. He's back to flying a Cardinal. Good old ST60. You never get sick of hearing those Tiger 60s grunt and groan. Anyway, the objective here is to get Elliot some flights, maybe some flying lessons, and uh, get this, get this plane dialed in as good as we can. We got a, a list a mile long. Karen left us. We have to do some errands before we go back to the house because tonight is the big birthday party. Family's coming over and it's blue skies. Look at the sky. You don't see a cloud in the sky today. No wind. Now, if we could only get Rich Oliver up here on a day like today, then we could call him once in a while and say, eat your heart out. He's always calling me and saying that, so. Boy, that day is really hanging in there nicely.
So we made a joint corporate decision this morning. Rather than just having a party tonight, we're going to have a birthday lunch for Wendy, and then we're going to have a birthday party tonight. A good, <laughs> a good decision, Rich. Now, Rich promises a one-flip start. He guarantees one flip. The man is like a one-legged penguin, one flipper. <laughs> one flipper, Rich. I don't understand about this engine, I don't believe really The Ferrari, no the Ferrari flag. No whatsoever that it's going to start, no. 